The reason why Nimona makes you uncomfortable isn't because you are homophobic, transphobic, or racist, but because of how the scenes are lit and a very specific use of light and shadow to tell a visual story. But it could also be those first three as well, I'm not going to roll that out. Nimona is interesting, and we need to talk about it. It's the cancelled movie that was bounced around between studios until it was finally released on Netflix. And what makes it ironic is that it wasn't cancelled or placed in developmental hell because it was a badly written movie or it had no sense of direction. Quite the contrary. It had a very clear direction, but it was cancelled because that direction was different. Which makes the message and the whole point of the movie even more poignant. Nimona is a children's movie that is easy to follow, easy to predict the outcome, and from a macro writing standpoint, doesn't do anything unique. The animation looks good, but on a surface level, it doesn't look like it's trying to do anything too crazy. It looks like a lower budget 2.5D animated movie. What Nimona gets right, however, is its visual storytelling, its character and micro writing, and it's an old message that is retold for an age that needs to hear it again. When you first watch the movie, it looks like a storybook style animation, you know, like they lifted the panels from a children's book and just animated them. Which works well for the story, but it doesn't push any boundaries. However, what it does do is it makes smart use of the animation style that they chose to convey a myriad of different messages to its audience for us to find and pick up on. Specifically when it comes to contrast. The use of light is very intentional in this movie, and it's the most striking thing about it, and I would encourage you to watch this movie with that thought in the back of your mind. There are no soft light shadows here. There is only bright flooding lights and hard lined shadows. Okay, there's a few here and there, but those soft lights are intentional. Normally in filmmaking, shadow signifies darkness, evil, betrayal, whereas light represents holy, good, Justice, all things right. Ballister, our main hero, is in black armor and is constantly shown in shadow. Whereas Goldenloin is in gold armor and constantly shown in the light. There are multiple examples throughout this movie of one character in shadow, one character in light, and breaking that line in between the two. Glorith bringing Nimona into the light, for example. But the more we watch this movie, the more we start to feel uneasy. These characters that are bathed in light are doing unjust and morally questionable things. They aren't good people. And we start to feel naturally uncomfortable because we've been conditioned as moviegoers to trust the light all of our lives. And now that idea is being questioned. We start to wonder if we were wrong. In scenes where the light is diffused and mixing with the darkness, we see the characters question the light. Most obviously in Nimona's hideout where Bal has to face his beliefs as to what a monster actually is, but also in scenes like Golden Loin's realization. What are we doing? And in the alleyway where Nimona and Ballister actually bond for the first time. These scenes are lit in such a way that there are no hard line shadows. It's this confusing muddled mix of light and dark where it's somewhere in between and it reflects how the characters are feeling. When I was watching this movie, this whole idea of using the stark contrast of bright light being untrustworthy and shadow not hiding but actually uncovering the truth, that kind of threw me, and I really enjoyed it. This idea of contrast goes even further into the designs and the structures of the society. The Institute is composed of these long, vertical, rigid, solid, unwavering lines and it gives the same feeling of having this long lineage of proud history of this is how things are done. Everything about the Institute is very sharp, angular, and just represents order in the chaos. Whereas everything with Nimona is pure chaos. It is pure, free-flowing energy, shown in wild, erratic loop-de-loops and swirls, and this whole clash, again, has to do with contrasts. Bit of a side tangent here, but one of the things I noticed when I was watching this movie, which I at first thought was because of budget cuts, was that the character models actually change based on how far away they are from the camera. And I thought I was going crazy at first, but 
The further away a character gets, the more geometric and polygonal they get. Characters are just blocky shapes, but the closer they get to the camera, we start to see the dents in the armor, the rust in the chainmail, and then even unshaven and uneven stubble. I thought this was a budgeting issue at first, since the movie was in developmental hell for so long, but from an interview from one of the creative leads, this was actually an intentional idea from the start. In the interview they said, and I'm going to paraphrase here, they wanted to visually show that you don't truly see somebody for who they are until you get close to them and truly know them for who they are. Which is one of the most poetic and poignant messages you can possibly show through visual animation. And I actually teared up a little bit when I heard that interview as it's something I've gone through very recently in my own life. All of these big picture ideas are complemented by smart character writing. Nimona doesn't try to get you with a ha, I am a twist villain that ignores the own plot of my own movie to try to get a reaction out of you. It doesn't go overboard with expectation subversion, it's predictable. But in kind of a good way? It's a story about how to be a better person, so it's kind of refreshing that it's what you're expecting. Ballister is a naive hero that holds onto his beliefs so stubbornly that when the things he believed turn on him, he somehow feels guilt and feels like it's his own fault. He has a nice growth throughout the movie as his entire world is called into question and he has to find answers. It also helps that he has incredible chemistry with Nimona. Which speaking of, Nimona steals the show here. They are the heart and soul of the movie and its message. Wildly unapologetic for who they are, creating mayhem and chaos where they say fit, and overall, just enjoyable to watch. While nothing crazy unexpected happens in the plot here, there are some moments of pure joy with Nimona. They let you keep the old one. No, let go. As well as some absolutely soul-crushing lines. But then sometimes I just want to let them. Other than the main two characters, there isn't really too much else to mention. I mean, Golden Loin has some good moments as well as director being well, an evil director. Nimona makes its audience uncomfortable, not necessarily with its subject matter, but with how it's shot and framed. However, certain people will be uncomfortable with this movie because of its message, and that's intentional. Nimona is a simple movie with a simple message that has been told and retold a thousand times. Someone who is different is persecuted for being different. But by the end of the story, the normal people understand and see the different person and accept them for who they are. We live in a world where being different has always been met with skepticism and fear. As Aaron Hansen once so eloquently put, I think people being mad at each other have been happening since there were two people. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Just like, you're not me. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> In an age where people are having their rights stripped from them, new scapegoats are created and ostracized daily, and people live in fear of segregation, daily threats of violence and discrimination, it's important to have stories to encourage the next generations to be better than we were. To be accepting and to show love and grace instead of acting as judge, juror, and executioner based on morals that were passed down to us by people that used morality as a weapon for power over a thousand years ago. In a system and a western world that claims to be based on love one another as yourself, it might be time to look at the actions of those in power rather than their words. To pass the torch on to the next generation and give them the knowledge and wisdom that we can from our mistakes. To let them question, what if we were wrong? Hey there, thank you for clicking on the video and supporting the channel. If you want to support the channel even further, as well as see videos early and see videos that I can't release on YouTube, then you can check them out over on Patreon. Patreon is just a way for people to support the channel more, as well as me be able to give them something back in return. If you're interested, there will be a link down in the description below, as well as up in the corner. Thank you. And a thank you to the executive levels over on Patreon, Bella Wella, Brandon Roy, Zarquation, Gabe Helmuth, Ian Etsep, Mafnar, and Mustafa Mond.